Okay, weird. Um, <clears throat> cool. So let's follow up from Tuesday. So marking out Tuesday, let's see, so today is the 24th. All right, so the Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, right around there. Um, so pretty much, right, I was a bit worried about whether we were going to convert into a bullish bias into a bear or you know continue the bearish bias right as you can see we came into a previous turbulence point that created a new movement into the upside and that was a relative uh, a relatively good point of interest <clears throat> so once we start to right give us a reaction not only do we get a continuation breaker structure, which led into breaking the character, the final character here, where we gave an upside push. So the thing about that was whether we were going to convert once again into the bearish bias, which was based on this internal liquidity grab, taking out previous high, potentially mitigating something, right? There's inefficiency there, and there is a candle of interest potentially. Um, whereas this could have been taking liquidity from the candle. So that dictated to me more so the narrative to continue to the downside, right? And although momentum continues to be relatively low, right? If we continue to zoom in, you can see Right, that we're pretty much stuck in a range. Once we're stuck in a range, this isn't anything that's appealing to me. Why? Because this is showing, right, that we have a solidified high based on the immediate break of structure. So this high would have been considered high low retracement, right, based on the preliminary continuation BOS. And this gives us a confirmed reaction just to then give us unwillingness based on the range low. So I'm gonna do this in a different color. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so we now have right a confirmed reaction to the downside based on continuation BOS. And then we have unwillingness because we were unable to take out the range low. And this is now a solidified low based on the preliminary structure break. So we're now considered to be in no man's land, right? So although we have a push to the upside, it's hard to justify that that is still part of the range continuation because, right, we had already given the confirmed reaction. The confirmed reaction was then taken out, meaning we are technically bullish. Right. This is why I don't like to, to only solidify the structural range intact. For example, this would have been your minor intraday um, structure, structural range. And then you have your confirmed reaction pullback. Then you have unwillingness, 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 no man's land. So once we come out of the range, right, I know that I am short term bullish, even though our minor intraday is overall bearish, even though also our overall directional bias is still bearish, right? So it's a bit conflicting and it's a bit hard to justify a position. So in these scenarios is where I really just take a step back, right? I know I am bearish, right? Especially after everything that happened today, but I know I am still bearish because the overall momentum is still bearish. The intermediate is still bearish, right? But the internal is bullish. So it's conflicting because it's not hard to justify a continuation to the downside. Um, but either way, right, because we have technically um, unwillingness or I believe it was a liquidity grab, minor liquidity grab, um, and then the bearish order flow, the bearish structure to the downside, it's hard to, for me to justify a bullish scenario as of yet. Um, and that pretty much leads us into the news event on Wednesday, I believe. So the news event on Wednesday, right? I don't typically trade um, news events. I don't see, I, I don't see why 
that's extremely appealing outside of high risk, high reward. Um, and typically I like to keep my risk as low as possible, not in terms of percentage, but in terms of justifying the position that I am, you know, putting myself in. So instead of trying to trade news, right, because I know I am short term bullish, right, based on, right, what we just mentioned, right, and we are still continuing bullish structure, right? So this is now a bit unappealing because I know that if we are going to continue lower, right, we have a probable reaction based on the high that created, right, the short term low which was then led by unwillingness and no man's land, right? So in order for me to try to take this, right, you need a confirmed reaction, right? Because this would be technically considered picking a high. So if I'm trying to be as conservative as I can be, I know for one, I am still bullish because my intermediate is still bullish, right? But like I said, it's conflicting because the overall is bearish. So I need the transition for it to come in play. Um, and as you can see, there is a previous turbulence point. Post reaction, we come into the turbulence point. And if this is even a high probable, well, not high probable, but this is a justified bullish scenario because this is continuing the narrative that we built based on confirmed reaction, unwillingness, no man's land, and then the breakout was bullish, right? So that continuation justifies this as a buy position. So as soon as we start coming back up and we challenge previous highs, that is now when this could be confirmed break even, right? But when I see a liquidity, a potential liquidity grab, not a liquidity grab because we don't even take our preliminary or the overall leg, but we see one top and then we see slow movement, two top, another movement, third top, right? I don't see any type of strong bearish order flow, but then at the same time, right? We see one top, two top, three top, and we're unwilling to take out the preliminary structure leg. So I see no strong bullish order flow, no strong bullish structure. So once again, a variant of no man's land. Right, so that would inevitably lead us to um, take, you know, our break even, and then even though that break even was taken, I can't justify the bearish position because nothing from a bearish perspective was met. Right, if we go, if we zoom out a bit, right, I would have wanted that top there yeah, that you can see here. I would have wanted at least an inefficiency fill to then dictate a bearish narrative so that then I could justify a bearish position. Um, but as you can see, there is no type of mitigation present. No type of mitigation present. It's hard for me to justify it from an order flow perspective, meaning that directionally, it's hard to judge where this will go in a medium perspective because at the end of the day, we are looking at our scalp timeframes. Um, so as you can see, there's really no way for me to justify a position. So during news, it doesn't make sense for me to trade it. Not, not to mention it's already 1 p.m. My time was just about two hours after I'm done trading for the day. So seeing that news event, right, I now want to see what happens afterwards because you, it pretty much varies based on, you know, the current narrative in place. Sometimes you will see news give you one push up, one push down, and then it stays down here and you leave a fat wick. Or as you can see here, we have a pretty much a whip, a whiplash of both sides. And then you come back and stay in the middle or the whiplash will continue to the original direction. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the news event to give me a confirmed reaction, a confirmed direction, right? And at first I thought this was actually gonna give us bullish momentum. And I thought this was going to be essentially um, a type of internal disruption. Let me delete all the, right. And by internal disruption, I would have mean, or external in this case, I would have meant that the POI was tapped here. We gave a strong reaction that took out preliminary structure here and here, and that would inevitably lead to the break. And if we were to sustain ourselves here by the next trading day, then I would have you know, been able to um, infer that we are in a bullish market because of the bearish uh, order flow disruption. 
So that's not the case, right? And so as you can see, right after we um, essentially gave you know, that internal, that external disruption to the upside, we inevitably came back down. So by the time, right, I'm trading for the next um, trading day, right, I'm seeing what happened during London, right, which I was actually up for last night, just because I was taking care of some schoolwork. Um, so the first thing I know is the mitigation, right? The second thing I know is what is happening internally. Does it make sense to want to give a bearish bias? So as you can see, we are bullish, right? Low, high, low, high. And then internally, there's obviously change color, high, low, high, low, high, low, right? Comes back into bearish, and, I mean, bullish and efficiency, right? So now here is where it gets interesting because this is now where we can start looking for a high probable opportunity based on a minor or even a scalp time frame based on a minor major intraday perspective because the narrative is built based on what happened after news right so even though this was a very strong move right obviously there is inefficiency left behind that's only being fulfilled through bullish structure bullish order flow so i'm only looking for the conversion to the downside um as you can see afterwards we start to see I'm sorry, not here, uh, right here, right? There is a potential mitigation. Does this mean sell here? Absolutely not, because you're technically still in bullish structure, high, low, high, low, high, but this is unwillingness now because we break preliminary structure, the continuation BOS, the continuation BOS. Um, sorry about that. The, in, the continuation BOS, is now leading right back into the candle of interest. The candle of interest now, now gives you another push to the downside, another preliminary structure break. But even though this here is not um, broken yet, it's good to, in, it's actually, um, how do I say it? It's, it's, it makes sense to make this as a point of unwillingness because we now have solidified reaction, solidified reaction, bearish order flow, right? So <clears throat> bearish order flow is now intact, right? And this is actually now where it makes sense to want to take, you know, a bearish position, even though this is considered Asia session, um, this is a justified position just based on order flow, unwillingness, overall narrative from news event. And there's a ton of confluence in there. So as you can see, there is here a scalp structural range based on taking out previous low and a confirmed reaction, right? And as you can see, the inefficiency fill here would have been a good reference point. And keep in mind, this is already a two and a half pip stop, right? So this is a justified position. And because this justified position works in our favor, based on the narrative in play, this gives us, right, obviously um, your, your TP1 from, a, from an intraday perspective would have been here. And that's barely, I believe, yes, yeah, one to six. And then as you keep going through your structural levels, 13, 16, and then you keep going into a 25. Um, so as you can see, right, this, if this plays out, right, which it looks like it might, um, it more than likely will. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because now zooming out from a, a more objective standpoint, right, I'm looking at, right, obviously this is the confirmed low, and then this is potential unwillingness, but there is a counter POI there. Unfortunately though, well, fortunately for me, um, there is no strong break of structure. 
no strong break of structure, bearish order flows intact. And now that we see, right, a potential um, structural disruption, and let me tell you why I see that as a potential structural disruption. And let me stick this out. I consider this, right, a structural disruption or a variant of it. Actually, no, let me not do that. Because this is a potential inefficiency POI with the invalidation being at the low of the candle. This inevitably led to a continuation BOS, right? And then that led to then a new form liquidity grab, right? But the leg, the leg was not taken out. So I know that I am still bearish, especially because then you have a liquidity grab to the downside. So this is now a confirmed reaction. And based on the course material, right? Because we have a break of structure here, this is a justified bullish scenario. The bullish scenario met scalp target, as you can see, and that led to then a liquidity grab. So that then, right, that liquidity grab now dictates a bearish bias once again, just as easily as we converted to bullish, we converted right back to bearish. So this now justifies continuation to the downside. And as you can see, even based on there, um, the wick of interest here that held itself, right? Although it was extremely messy, it sustained itself and it gave us a move to the downside. So here is now when we see something a bit conflicting um, because from the perspective right, of, of structure, I'm bearish. I have every reason to be bearish until my invalidation is met. I would make this my new invalidation, right? Because this is where the volume came in that gave us the structural disruption and the new internal structural range. So we could be seeing any type of retracement. I would love no deeper than that, right? To then give us more room to the downside. And if we take this low out, I don't see why we don't start coming for this previous low that we mentioned before, especially now. I didn't note this. Um, I just, I'm actually seeing this now too, but as you can see the pre the previous POI that we mentioned, that is also now internal disruption uh, based on, or I mean, order flow disruption, I'm sorry, uh, based on the reaction and then taking out the POI. Right. And then not only that, but we now sustained ourselves below the previous high, making this unwillingness of the high low overall retracement. And this could pretty much generate us more room to the downside. Right. So more, you know, a bit of a rant, but I know you guys see where I'm coming from here. Um, does that all make sense? Yeah, but I have a question, bro. Uh -huh. um, can you my internet failed. Can you zoom in here in the five minutes, please? One second, one second. Um, let me put this over here. Do you want me to remove my drawings? No, no, no. Uh, no, okay. yeah. So um, the trade uh, I did, um, mm -hmm. I, um, I basically followed this, this thinking, but mm -hmm. I entered here on this POI um mm -hmm. on uh, i think it was on 50 percent of this yeah mm -hmm. um it was aggressive or it was like um conservative yes i would say conservative because you do have i would say conservative because you have the order flow here present and then this is technically a confirmed liquidity grab is, is that what you see here the li potential liquidity grab continuation break of structure yeah yeah i i saw it at as a, a preliminary break of structure or minor BOS. Uh -huh. But this I don't know if it is right. Aggressive because your minor intraday is still bullish. High, low, high, low. Yes. High, you see? But it's yeah. conservative because you waited for the order flow and the preliminary break of structure because the preliminary break of structure solidifies the high. Yes. Yeah. So that would make that would mean that this is a conversion to the downside, right? Obviously, then you can convert once again here 
right? Because this is now unwillingness based on um, the unwillingness and then unwillingness, right? But because I'm more so referencing the overall unwillingness based on low, high, low unwillingness, yeah. right? My bearish bias is not invalidated until this is taken out. So you yeah. see why this makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks, bro. See, I'm trying not to mess up my words a bit. Um, does anybody have any questions with that? I didn't look at DXY today, though. Messy, 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 messy. Was this the news event? Uh, no, this wasn't. This was last night, actually. I'm going to ignore that wick because I don't see that on EU. So I'm just going to not reference that wick. I'm just going to reference the price action internally. Um, but as you can see here, ignoring the wick, right, we came back into, right, a potential fulfillment of an efficiency that then led to a break of structure. And that was based on the news event, I believe. Yes, it was. And then as you can see, immediately after, we then came back for structure. So in order for me to confirm a bearish bias, I need to see this break that. And then that's when you can justify a ton more bearish positions. NCG, yeah. Also, I'm just not looking at the chat. My bad, my bad. Yep, yep. DXY didn't take the low and it didn't take the knife. Yeah, you said yeah, okay, yeah. That's why that's also why I'm going to um that's why I'm going to disregard the wick. If the wick doesn't make sense on every other pair, then it could just be potential broker slippage. So I'm not really too worried about it. Can you see GU? Yes. Let's look at AU first. Um AU, okay, interesting one. This one I didn't even uh, pay attention to this week just because we are still, even though we are still heavily bearish, right? We're in a extreme discount. So very interesting because of what happened here. Right, POI was met. Although I, I think um, that there wasn't any like justified entry here. Yeah, there wasn't, as you can see. Um, I believe I had any some type of uh, alert somewhere around here and I never met, so I just never looked at this. But when we're looking at this from a perspective of structure, right, doesn't really seem too appealing, especially because we just keep taking liquidity, 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 and we didn't even reach a premium. Right, unless you're obviously looking at this POI, but I'm more so looking at buying, at selling higher. Um, so this never really came, became appealing to me, but just based on today's or this week's reactions, right? We'll look at the date at the weekly closures here in a bit. Um, but just looking at this, I really like how this reaction took out preliminary structure from a from an intraday perspective here. Because that took that out, I'm now fully bearish and I'm aiming for here. Definitely aiming for here. And then now I wanna see what happens down here because it's taken a lot of effort to gain this recovery. This recovery has taken a ton of time, a ton of effort. So I would like to see liquidity be cleared. And if we can then see something internally, then I would like to see a reversal because we have technically taken, right, the pre previous structure, and this would make sense to then give you more movement to the upside. Um, obviously that's invalidated if you have a disruption based on the POI, but just internally, I am still medium term bearish. Yeah, medium term bearish, medium term bearish. You know, GU. Oops. All right, cool. Yeah, this one I didn't even look at too, at, at all. Um, I really tried to focus on EU over the past couple of days. 
Um, but just based on today's day, 24, 21, not much today, not much this week. Looking at this from <clears throat> an intraday perspective here, it looks like we could be bullish, especially because of where we're reacting from currently. Bullish. Bullish. And you can see his internal reactions there. So this, I definitely want to see what happens here. Um, because a reaction here that breaks structure would then make us start targeting down here. Whereas if we break and we then have a recovery, then we can then start aiming for here. Right, yeah, especially with taking up preliminary structure, although this is technically the pullback of the overall range, right, this reaction is becoming a bit concerning. Right, which is why I'm saying this is a major breaking point. I mean, this buyer in this one, cool. That makes sense. That makes sense. Let me see. Let's actually see if I can figure out why you entered. Can you tell me where you entered from? Was it based on? Was it based on? Where is my arrow? Was it based on momentum, taking out character, preliminary structure, and then, and then this? Right, so this one, if I were to have been playing this, um, I would have acknowledged the inefficiency fill but I would have acknowledged the internal one as well, right? Because this, right, reaction based on the POI, this then taking preliminary structure gives me a sign of optimism and it gives me, right, the probability that this is unwillingness based on low or low retracement unwillingness. Um, and then that would have been my sign to buy and my sign to buy Right, even if I would have taken this, um, my invalidation is here. But you know, GU loves its deeper tracements. Most GBPs do. Right, but your invalidation was never met. So I'm assuming this is around where you're entered. Let's see. Am I right or am I wrong? If you have your time, can you see AG structure? I'm not looking at AG, bro. I don't I don't trade AG, you know this. Um, but is this what you guys saw on GU or is it not? Where's my phone? All right, so you guys tell me to look at GU, but now you guys aren't telling me anything. All right, then uh, I'll just leave it at that then. Uh, I'll look at EG for you then. Oops. Yeah, I don't know why you're trading this. <laughs> no way. Yeah, there's no way I'm trading this at all. I don't see anything and I don't see a reason to trade this, right? Looking at this from immediate structure, right? Structural disruption led to recovery into inefficiency, 
but this did not lead to break this. So because this had here unwillingness and preliminary break of structure, and then we came back to challenge the high, and then there's preliminary structure in here, this is now no man's land. So what do I see? Oops, I see a fat triangle. Yeah, that's not tradable for me. If you looking at this now, um, if I'm zooming out though, the only thing that I think would this would make sense from is potentially seeing this Uh, we've already discussed that as being distro. No, I'm uh, I'm just I'm more so referencing this. So if you find so from this perspective, right, it's the same thing for for both two and and one, right? But the LPSY in phase D is still the same. So in this scenario, the only way for me to justify. Oops. Is if you now internally, um, if you internally, right, see a reason to sell, you have a very big target. And that very big target is down here. This is what you're aiming for, probably for the rest of the year, if I'm being honest. Um, especially with how slow this is moving. You guys, this hasn't moved. This hasn't, it's been a range of 276 pips for about 2014 days, seven months seven months. Yeah, so if you can find a reason to um, sell what I mean, in reality, this is in, in, in terms of the immediate range, this is bearish. Um, long time frame. I would say this is bearish because you did take out preliminary structure, you then took out previous liquidity, you met an inefficiency, and that inefficiency led to an internal liquidity grab. Let me mark that up for you. So you so you can know what I'm saying potential um, efficiency, then preliminary structure break, taking out liquidity, liquidity grab. So I wonder what happens there, but then if you're looking at price now, price already had its internal reaction, its unwillingness, right? And so if this move here right, leads to bullish movement, right? If you get any transition here, then it's pretty good. To, it would be a pretty um, justified scenario for more downside movement. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I would say it's the bearish, but this is just sloppy, super sloppy. Super, super sloppy, yeah. And we are approaching monthly closures, so we'll look at that in a bit too. Even though structures bearish on EU, is that the retracement after news event? I already discussed the news event, bro. Um, I don't know if you missed that. I already discussed what the I discussed what this was. Continuation. 
that's all I see there. Um, no, we haven't covered that yet. If you guys want to talk about that. Yeah, see, so now you see the issues because looking at this, right? You did the exact same thing here that you did Oops, not there, not there. That you did here. You waited only for continuation BOS and you didn't let for it to fully um, show its hand. So you see how it's inconsistent in terms of only waiting for the preliminary structure. But at the end, at the same time, this is much more justified because of the order flow and the confirmed reaction. Whereas your trade is based on basically, um, uh, I don't see this based on anything. You're just trying to pick a low here. And this wick doesn't make sense either, unless it's a POI internally. That wick doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> but um, on Tuesday, what do you guys want to know with um, pretty much time blocking is I guess what it's called. Because we discussed time block. Oh, let me pull up my phone. Mm. Let me see. Actually, it's on here. Found it. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, time blocking, internal structure. I think I covered um, internal structure with the um, uh, with that EU conversation, unless I'm mistaken. But unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure you guys got a small review of internal structure. Uh, but pretty much time blocking. We were pretty much discussing. Let me let me do like a random pair. Pretty much discussing, um, like for example, today. All right. Well, today's like more of a chill day because it's Friday. I don't have class on Fridays, so it'll pretty much be, for example, same thing. All right, six two. Well, 10 today, because I'm obviously trading, uh, I'm obviously doing the call right now. And then obviously 1030, right to wherever, whenever this finishes, which should be around 1140, right? I have my, uh, the call, right? And then there's obviously there's, um, well, today I have a haircut at 1240 to, that usually takes 40 minutes, so to say 130. Right, then I have uh, potentially treatment from two to three. I have a PT. Right, then this would be haircut. Right, so what I'm basically doing is I have specific times for everything that I have to do. I have, uh, and then after this, right, I'll probably go to the gym. 3.30, uh, maybe four because I have to eat, considering that I have to eat. Four do five thirty, gym, right six to seven thirty. I have to study for my test on when Thursday. I'm sorry, Thursday, and then that's the rest of the day is my free time. So you see, I don't necessarily <clears throat> have everything noted every single day, but I know exactly what I'm doing every single day, um, just because I basically do most of the same things every single day. And if I ever have to include, um anything like for example i have to include treatment today um i'll include it you know i know that i have to include it but every single day is basic is very structured i know exactly what i'm doing for the most part 
then my Saturdays and Sundays, Sundays are pretty much um, soccer days. And then Saturdays are pretty much, well, I'll probably be studying this Saturday, but I'm basically chilling for the rest of the day. I don't know what, um, what else we missed about that. <laughs> yeah, it helps you stay productive. Yeah, it helps me not, you know, try to procrastinate and just stay in bed. <clears throat> cool so um, do you guys have any questions or can we end it off here cool um let me see just go ahead and end the recording